All right. So with the genome assembly, after doing it, it's possible to visualize. So we can do that by looking at the content in the assembly graph. So there's the assembly graph. So we can visualize it. Let's check the Galaxy tutorial page and see what was done. So that's what has been given here. So we have banded image. So this one, this session here shows us how to visualize the genome assembly. Okay, so that means we have to use the assembly graph. So we have to also use bandage, which we have installed by the way, and then we will supply it with our assembly graph. That one too, we will do that. I'll show you everything on the terminal. So let's do that and then compare the outputs we have to this one here. All right. So let's get back to the terminal and then we are going to call bandage. So that's how we we'll call bandage. All right. So let's clear the screen. And then let's do an LS into the assembly directory again. And then proceed. So we are now going to visualize the assembly by using this assembly graph here. So we will use bandage. So to visualize using bandage, we have to first call bandage. So if you installed bandage using Mamba or Conda or Micro Mamba, then you say bandage, you call it like this. And then you execute the command. So let's execute this command. All right, bandage has been opened. So we have to load our assembly graph. So to do that, we come to this session here, come to file, and then click on load graph. And then you will go and locate your assembly graph. So in the assembly directory, you need to locate assembly underscore graph dot GFA, this one here. So open it. And after opening, you come to this side, the left side here, and then click on draw graph. So click it, and then it will be displayed for you. So, all right, the assembly graph has been drawn for us. Now, what you should notice is that the drawing that you see here can differ from one machine to the other. And even in the same tool, whenever you click on draw, the diagram will differ a bit it will change a bit but it's basically the same i think there's a bit of randomness in how bandage draws the graph so that is something to be expected so don't worry all right now let's proceed so let's take a look at the glossary page and look at what was done after the assembly graph was drawn let's go back yeah, so we have that here. So we have this, and we also have this, and that's what we are also seeing here in our graph. So we have this, and then we also have this, and we also have these ones, which I wouldn't focus on. I would rather focus on this one for now. All right, so let's proceed. Let's do something. So remember when we display the assembly info.tst we had some information coming up let's just do that again i'll do that here so i'll just display it again i'll say cut assembly slash assembly and let's call info.tst so we had them here so we have the length we also have coverage we also have the context here by the way so we are going to focus on just this one here. Look at the length. So if you take a look at the length we have here and compared to the genome length, we see some similarity. All right. Now let's go back. Let's go back to the Galaxy page. So we have some questions here. It says, how many contexts do you have? We had, or let me say, I had three. What is the coverage of the longest contact? And we also have the length of your longest contact. And does this feel like potentially an MRSA genome? Let's look at the solution. So with the answers here, 
it says two that's the number of points that is what was displayed here but on my pc i had three what is the coverage of the longest contact 181 so that is here there's the longest contact by length is 181 but for us or let me say for me the coverage was what 198 that's what i have here all right now let's go back to that question it says what is the length of the longest contic or your longest contic so here it's 2.9 mb and that is what we also have here 2.9 mb that's the longest contic then let's take a look at the last question it says does this feel like potential and mrsa gene genome yeah and the answer is yes because we have a 2.9 mb genome which is approximately the size of an mrsa genome that's the staphylococcus aureus and that's what i just made mention of so and then there's also a one small potential plasmid genome so that one is this one that's what we also had here this one here that's what it is all right so le let's just go back to the galaxy we have so basically these things will also help you to understand your data and combine with the biology of the organism the information you already have it also give you the confidence that indeed the data you have is okay and you are using the right uh, methods and then the right tools for the work so it's important to always do some of these things as you go along and it also uh, enables you to reproduce the tutorial or let me say the work so doing these things helps you to get a workflow or a pipeline that can be reproduced because at the end of the day if you have your results and it's not reproducible then it becomes a challenge and so it's always important to do these things and it also gives you the confidence so with what we have here if let's say the contact size the longest one or let's say any of them if we did not have a size which was around this and let's say we had let's say 1.2 or let's say three point something then we can start asking other questions because if indeed we are dealing with an mrsc genome then we should have this number so anything other than this number or anything not close to this number uh, should raise suspicions okay and the only way and the only way you can find out i repeat the only way you can find out is to uh, do some of these quality control steps to be able to get them and then proceed so with what we have done so far we are confident because we have one quantity or one sequence with this um, genome size and that's indicates that yes indeed we can proceed with the work so we can even separate or extract that quantity from the others and then use that for a dynamic analysis so that's how is done but of course for this story we are not going to do any extraction by the way now let's check this so with the assembly graph that you have if you display it it's possible to annotate so you can add your lengths i think i should have showed that so you can add the length here so the length when you check it you will see this one has a 2.9 mb there's the contact you also have this one you also have this and we also have this as well so that's it you can add a name you can also add your coverage so remember we had 198 on the table let's check for that contact it was 198 so that is what has been displayed here that's for the depth so if you don't see covid and you see depth here it's the same thing so take note of that yeah you can also do other stuff but that's beyond the scope of this tour so you can also export to an image file so you can come to file i repeat let me just go over you can come to file and then you can save the image current view entire scene and let, let's just say current view so you can click it and then you'll be asked to save so you can save it anywhere you want 
other MRC or any directory, I'll just save it here in the same directory as the assembly graph, and I can check. Let's go and check. So this is it. You can open it, you can put this in your reports, or you can also decide to uncheck the length, coverage, and name, and then maintain just the graphs themselves, and then use it for whatever you want to do. So that's also up to you. All right. We'll proceed to do a QC.